Hey, what's up everybody? Adam here. Welcome back to another 3D artistry landscape tutorial. In this video, we are going to be talking about how to leverage AI to create more photorealistic characters in our 3D renders. So the first thing I'm going to do here is we're going to look at our uh, images that I rendered and these are from D5 render and we can see here some of the issues that are pretty common not bad but you know definitely not realistic what I did was I rendered out both a day and a night to just kind of show how this solution will take into account your lighting conditions so I have some different lighting conditions here we go again so we're gonna go ahead and run these through um, this process and we'll take a look at the after results so you can kind of see these we're going to do I have some here if you're doing 3d rendering like me with people and you have clients who want people in the scene just for scale things like that probably you're avoiding directly putting the camera where the face is or you're trying to rotate them just so they're not looking directly at the camera just because it can be so distracting um, but I think you'll see that we're actually going to have some really good results here, which will allow us to get shots that actually have uh, people in the foreground. So again, different lighting, different lighting, different lighting here. So I think that was the last one. And yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our finished renders. I rendered these out at 2k resolution and we're going to run them through this process is going to actually up sample them to 4k so there's another benefit there as well what we're going to use is something called code former i've been using code former for a while with mid journey and stable diffusion with my results i, I run them through code former to clean up the ai generated faces and i've gotten some really really awesome beautiful photorealistic results so i thought hey i wonder if i could try this on these people in my 3d renders and yeah it actually does a great job so what you need to do is pull up the google collab notebook i can put a link to it in the description this is free to use at least for now i have a paid google collab account it costs 10 bucks a month and it basically allows me to get priority on certain gpus and stuff but uh, i think that the free version you just have to wait a little bit longer or something to make sure if they're busy that you can get into one of the gpus for the most part it should be free if it's not just let me know that way i can stop telling people that it is all right so the first thing you're going to do once you get into the collab notebook is you're going to run each cell you need to run the prerequisite cell in the beginning that will set up the overall environment it'll load in the scripts that we need it'll connect you to the model that's going to do the facial restoration and the up sampling so you just just hit this little play button here and that'll run the cell right and the cell is a bunch of code and it'll go and download what it needs to download it downloads a pre-trained model sets up the Python environment and basically gets all your prerequisites loaded and ready to go only takes a few minutes to do it but once that's done you'll see a little checkbox here pop up so I'll just let that run through um, a lot of it I've already done so it should be super fast and you can see I'm done 18 seconds I got the check mark here the first time again it will take a little bit longer but now we're ready to go we can test it on our photos we're gonna run this cell here and that'll bring up this choose file button and from here we can go and grab our images and just load those in and they're gonna take a little while to load so I'm gonna pause the video all right, so this is just about done. Uh, it's uploading the last one here. I just want to talk quick about these settings. So the first is the fidelity. So there is a slider that the numbers go up to a higher number and then down to a lower number. I think they go up to one, down to like 0 0.01. So the way that that works is basically fidelity means that you're going to try to keep the accuracy so let's say i you know had an old photo of my grandmother and i was trying to restore it in here i would want to keep that fidelity right because i want that picture to look as much like her as possible 
uh, or I was, you know, doing some AI of a celebrity or something, right? So I want to I want to maintain that fidelity with what we're doing with 3D. We really don't need that. These are just random people. Um, so what I do is I lower this number down here and we balance towards quality rather than fidelity. So I don't want to actually follow exactly what the 3D person looks like. So I can turn this all the way down um, to 0 0.01. Okay, so the next one is background enhance. This will um, just kind of add a little bit of sharpening some clarity just some general enhancements um, if things are out of focus or low resolution so that's through the real um, ESR GAN so then we have the up sample restored faces that's it we've uploaded our renders um, I plugged in 14 images these are our settings and now we're just going to click this button and this is going to go through and it's going to do some face detection. So it's pretty quick overall. It doesn't take a, a long time to do the actual processing. All right, one more. So you can see here it did five faces in this picture, four faces in this picture, and then two in the rest. Now it's done. And what you can do here is now preview the results. The reason for that is it gives you a chance before you download them to come back and adjust these settings up here. All right, so let's visualize the results here. So this usually goes pretty quick as well. Okay. So you might might not be able to tell from this distance, but let's go ahead and download them and then do a comparison. Uh, the download, for whatever reason, probably takes longer than anything else in here. And you get a zip file. So the one thing to note is if I run these, let's say I did these 14 images and then I wanted to do another batch and I just go back and I run the cell again to add more images. When I get down to the download, it's going to download the first 14 and the next batch as well, which is going to make it take twice as long. So once you're done this, if you want to do another batch, I would recommend just refreshing and starting over and that way you'll clear whatever's in the download results here you can also clear output right here but i usually like to just refresh and it'll get rid of all the images and anything that i have here that's basically set up so i'll pause this and let this run through all right so we are finally done and let's go ahead and open up our zip file here. We're just going to extract it to a folder. Let's actually just open some side by side. So I think you'll agree that that is a pretty large difference there. There's our D5 face. So just like that, we moved a little bit closer to photorealism. Let's check back here. A massive improvement overall. Okay, so let's check out the lighting here. So let's go back here and again. Here's our result compared to what we had from the render engine, which doesn't look too bad, um, but you can definitely see that there is a, a world of better realism here especially over here in this one. All right, so let's look at the next one. So look at the detail. I mean, you can see the skin, everything in there. And let's compare it to this. Just night and day. Okay, same deal with the lighting. Kind of see just how much more realistic that looks. So here's one with four different people. We have a couple different angles here. Start here. 
you could see the increase in clarity here and sharpness and just photorealism. Same here. You can barely make out that there's a face there. And now you can see crystal clear. And even this one, which is at a kind of side angle and just really nailed it. I think the quality overall speaks for itself. Let's look at the next set here. And this guy and here just, you know, you've got the crow's feet, the freckles, aging spots. I mean, the, the realism is, is insane compared to this. And let's look at her. And just the hair and the detail in the hair as well is so good. Same here. There's before and after. Here as well. So I was curious about this one. I mean, this is amazing. There we are with the night lighting. Two more here. Let's look at the hair here compared to the CG hair. A lot more realistic. And, you know, you can see we're picking up details here with the upsampling as well. And the image itself just looks a lot better. And obviously it's double resolution, but it's also sharper. And there's more detail. So let's look here, 3D. Huge difference. Same here, I mean, you get the five o'clock shadow, the stubble just really pops out. And you can even see it in, in the plant, right? The details that it's pulling in. I think you'll agree with me that this opens up the possibility to now not have to kind of hide from your 3D people when you're setting up your cameras in your scene. Uh, you can actually render at a lower resolution, which will save time, run it through Codeformer, add photorealism to the 3D people in the scene, as well as upsampling. But I think you'll agree overall that this is really um, a powerful option to have that we can now take our 3D people and make them look a lot more photorealistic. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something as well. Please leave a comment, a like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.